God, uh, we thank God for this day. We praise God for His protection and His love for us. This morning, I want to bring you the Word of God once again. And uh, let me bless you with a word of prayer as we start. Father, we thank you for this day. We glorify your name. I pray for each and every one who follows, Lord God. I pray for the Holy Spirit to touch, to bless, to heal, to save, and to make war. Father, I thank you for your blessing upon us also. Guide me and read me. Use me as your instrument to bless your people wherever they are. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Today I want to bring you the word of God about the safety and security. You know, we are in this world and we always wrong for security. We always wrong for safety. Everybody is looking for where he can be safe. And uh, I have seen many people moving from place to place, uh, looking for where they can be safe. Uh, some even migrate from nation to another nation uh, looking for safety and security. They leave their motherland, they leave their possessions, they leave family because of insecurity and instability. So we are people who always looking, longing for security and safety. Much more in spiritual realm, we also need safety and security in spirit. What I mean by security? By in spirit, we are living in two different worlds. And uh, there is a world that people live in, which I can call a carnal world, and there is also a spiritual world. So in spiritual world, there are those people who are saved, those who have converted, those who are, you know, put their faith in Jesus Christ and also live by the word of God. These people, they live in two different worlds at the same time. They live in the spiritual world, and at the same time, they live in the physical world that each and everybody is living in. So even in that spiritual world, we also need safety and security. And we cannot obtain that security and safety in spirit from anywhere else apart from Jesus Christ. I want us to read a verse in um, Colossians chapter 3. Verse number 1 to number 5. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 1 to number 5. Very quickly, I'm reading. If then we are raised in Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on things on earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death your members which are on earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. I'll be stressing very much on uh, verse number 3, which says, For you died and your life is hidden in Christ, is hidden with, actually, with Christ in God. That way the, the Christ is hidden, that's where we should be hidden. That's our refuge. That's where we should run into. That's where we should look for safety and security. Now, why security? Why safety and security? Why safety and security? I'm going to read John chapter 16, verse 33, very quickly again. In John chapter 16, verse number 33, let me read very quickly. Um, the Bible says, uh, 33, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. This was Jesus Christ speaking to his disciples, telling them that these things, he has, speak, he has spoken these things for their sake. He, has, he wanted them to have peace. He wanted them to be, you know, be at peace because I'm speaking to you these things. Now, 
he mentioned something very important that in this world you will have tribulation. In this world there always will be disturbity, there always be insecurity, there always be tribulation. Why tribulation on those who believe and those who trust in God? Because it's not your home. This world is not my home. This world is not your home if you are a believer. So we will have tribulation. But what do we do when tribulation comes? What do we do? How do we make it? How do we make a way out? This is the word of God that will help us to see how we have to get out of it. Because the Bible has many words, has many counsels how to get out of this. Now, this uh, world, as the Bible has said, did not appreciate or receive Jesus Christ gladly. As you well know that the God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, here on earth, and uh, the purpose of that was to come and save us, save each and everyone, as the Bible says that, so, for so God loved the world, and He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him, he may get eternal life. So He sent Jesus Christ to save the world from sin, so that we will be living with God in eternal life. But it doesn't take those He saves at the same time. He does not save you and take you at that moment. You will have to wait for the appointed time. You wait for the rapture, you wait for the death, you wait for your time to depart from this world where you are not belonging. Now, during the waiting, that's where the tribulation occurs. That's where the circuits occurs because if you are a believer, this world will not understand you as they did not understand Christ. They did not understand him. He taught them. He explained everything. He prayed for them. He made everything. You know, he made things for them. He fed the hungry. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He did everything to make his name clear and also to make himself identified so that he will be accepted as a saving God that they will take him at heart and make him a friend and also make him his, their refugee. But they did not understand him at all. Instead of blessing him, what, they did, what did they do? They cast him. To the last moment, they killed him. So at the same time, we are also believing, we are Christ-like, we are walking as Christ walked, we want and we desire in our hearts to fulfill what the God intends us to fulfill, we want to do what we're supposed to do that the Bible says, so this world will not understand us, that's where the tribulation occurs. Actually, we want to mention this, that when you are a serious believer, when you are disciples of Jesus Christ, praying, preaching, witnessing, you are freezing the works of the devil to the point that you will be an enemy of the world. Even John in his writing said, if you love the world, you will, be not, you will not be loving God. Because this world does not love God and does not even appreciate. So that's number one. If they did not appreciate him, of course they will not appreciate you also. So we will have trouble. Now how do we overcome? We have to be hidden with Christ in God. Hallelujah. But he says that um, in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Because he overcame the world. He did overcome. And his victory is not for him alone, but it was for all of us who follow him and who love him, who works for him. We need to be hidden in Christ. We need to be hidden with Christ in God. So that's what the reason why we need safety and security. Because the world is hunting, the devil is hunting, the Bible says the devil does not sleep. He walks, he rolls around looking for anyone to devour. And that anyone is not anybody else. It's you and me. So we need safety and security. 
safety and security is good and we know we can get it in Christ Jesus but when we are hidden in Christ we have also other benefit i may call it a healthy benefit we will be healthy spiritually because uh, we will be at peace we will be with we will be cheerful because though tribulation but we will be cheerful we will be peaceful because jesus said i'm speaking these things to you so that you have peace so we will be healthier spiritually and also we will be healthier physically our physical will be healthy because jesus christ is a healer jesus christ is everything we need as far as the healthy concern let's go to the bible again read in proverbs chapter 4 verse number 22 proverbs 20 i mean to proverbs chapter 4 verse 22 the bible says for they are rife to those who find them and the heritage to all their flesh let me read from verse number 20 so that you hear it probably this writer is saying my son give attention to my words incline your ear to my sayings do not let them depart from your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart keep his word in the midst of your heart for they are rife to those who find them and the heritage to their flesh now as the writer says that my son give attention take heed to my words take heed to my sayings what does that mean this mean that the word of god heed them take a, a good care i mean take the, uh, give them attention let your attention be to the word of god because it is from them that they are healthy to you that find it they are healthy to those who find them they are rife and they are healthy the word is healthy the word is life now who does that say or who is this speaking about in the world there are many things that look to infect you they are looking to infect you and me those are sickness disease virus and many more we are to be hidden in him who uh, who is the word of god and be safe from physical attacks the writer says my my son attend to my words for they are healthy and they are life they are life and they are healthy <laughs> also to your bodies now who when you hear that what do you understand i'm straight ahead looking at jesus christ is spoken in this verse because the wisdom of this man who wrote this book is pointing ahead to Jesus Christ is pointing ahead to him that take heed to his word who is the word the bible says that Jesus is the word of god i think you know very well that um Jesus is the word of god according to john chapter 1 verse 1 this word created everything we see and nothing exists that was not created by him So if the word is Jesus and Jesus is speaking to us we should hear his word we should uh, pay attention to what he is saying because the word is our life and the word is the health to our bodies we shouldn't be entitled to sickness we should be overcomers of these viruses that attack the world and make each and everything down believe us we should be number one cures of these things if we are really hidden in Christ where Christ is hidden we also there 
Because the power of God, the word is power, and the power is the word, and the word is powerful than anything else. It is powerful to heal each and every sin. It is powerful to heal each and every disease. It is powerful to deliver each and every curse. It is powerful to take each and every curse and make it hang on the cross. Our faith is in the word of God. Our blessing is in the word of God. Our heritage is in the word of God. Our life is in the word of God. We are to be completely set off. We are to be completely delivered. We could be, you know, completely whole for the word of God. In Christ Jesus, there is also provision. As you remember what we read in Colossians chapter 3, that if we were reasoning with Christ, we should seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated. There is where that, that's where our profession, our provision is coming from. Provision is in Christ Jesus. Where He is, that's where our provision is from. That's why when a believer tries to maneuver, tries to go around the word of God and try to use his own mind, try to use his own strength to gain what he wants or to provide for his needs, he is misreading himself and uh, the consequence will be he is grieving the Holy Spirit, he is grieving God who is setting you to be an example. He is, you know, the Spirit is grieved because that's not the way a believer is provided for. Our blessing, our provision is not from anywhere else but from God who is in heaven. That's, uh, that is uh, the truth about it. Again, Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, he says that be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God. Why didn't he say, let your requests be known to your neighbor? Why didn't he say, let your requests be known to your uncle? He knows your uncle is well to do. He knows you are a father, you are in-law, you are whoever, your friend. He knows they are blessed, they have this and that. They are well to do, they can help anybody if they want. But it doesn't want us to focus our faith to a human being and shift from our God. Because we have been raised from death, we've been raised from sin, we've been dead according to Ephesians chapter 2. We were dead with our trespasses. Now as long as we arrive, as long as we are risen, as long as we are alive in Christ, then we should be hidden in, with Christ in God. That's where our everything lies. That's where we should lift our eyes and say, God, I need this. That's why in this book, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, is clearly stating that, be anxious of nothing. What are you anxious of? Are you anxious of health? It's been in Christ Jesus, in being in, obtained from the Word of God. The Word of God is rife and healthy to our bodies. What are you anxious of? Bible has said, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, your request be known to God. Don't run up and down telling your people, telling your friend, Oh, I need this. Oh, oh I have a problem. Oh, 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 go to God. Approach the master city of God. Approach the master city. That where you will be obtaining your forgiveness. That's when you will receive your mercy. That's when you will receive provision. Because your life is not in your friend. And your life is not in your father. Your life is not in your uncle. Your life is hidden in Christ. Praise God, brothers and sisters. I want you to know from today onward that your life is found hidden in Christ or with Christ. 
in God. You shouldn't run out of this word from you. Put it very close to your heart because this is your life. The word of God is your life. The word of God should be your healthy. And it will flow from you. Because when you have abundant of life, when you have abundant of healthy, your health will flow from you to other people. They will also receive healthy from you. People should receive healing from you. Start believing God for healing other people. The word is clear. Those who believe, the signs will follow them. They will put their hands on the sick and they will recover. You can send the word to your fellow who is in the hospital. You can send the word to your fellow who is sick at home and pray that, God, I'm sending your word to this fellow who is sick at home and he will be free. He will recover. Praise God. The Bible is full of verses that direct us or point us to Jesus Christ where he is seated in the right hand of God. And that's the same Bible asks us to pray and ask God for anything. Be it for hearing, be it for feeding, be for direction, be anything to do a certain thing. If you want direction from God, he's ready to direct you. You don't know what to do next year or you don't know what to do in five years. You don't want, you don't know where you'll be. You don't know what you'll be doing. You worried to know how if you will go back to school. You're worried if your business will stand. You're worried for your children. You're worried for every, ask, seek direction from God. And God will direct you. God will direct you. Christ is seated in the right hand of God and he is hidden in God. So we should be hidden with him in, in God. Everyone who is hidden in Christ is safe. Hallelujah. There is nowhere else you can find safety as you can find it in Jesus Christ. He is safe from many things. Whoever is hidden with Christ in God is hidden from witchcraft will not affect you. Witchcraft will find and will not find you. Demons will seek, will get, move around, will run out, around getting you, but they will not find you. Demon will not attack you easily because they cannot find you. It is like this. If you think like this, Take a grasshopper. Some they call them senene or whatever. This uh, a grasshoppers, when they fall down, the birds have got food. Now take those grasshoppers, put them in the bottle, and then put them around where the birds can see them. You know the bottle is the bottle is transparent. Birds see the grasshoppers within the bottle but they do not know that they are protected so they will come and try to get them but they will hit the bottle that's how it is with us we are you know we are vulnerable everybody can see us but in spirit, we are hidden with Christ in God. Devil comes and tries to attack, but instead he gets Jesus instead of getting us. The curse comes up and wants to attack, and it gets Jesus. It hits Jesus. It doesn't hate us. Hallelujah. Because we are hidden with Christ in God. This is a very good place to be. This is a very good place to be in Christ Jesus. Who is now qualified for this? Who is really qualified to be hidden in Christ? Because it's not everybody. It's not each and everyone. There should be qualification. There should be, you know, quality. Who is qualified to be hidden in Christ? Like I said in my previous sermon, 
Not everyone who calls Lord, Lord will go to or will see the kingdom of God. So I say that not everyone who is called a Christian is hidden with Christ in God. I think you know what I'm saying. Because the Bible has said, no, it's not everyone who calls Lord, Lord will see the kingdom of God. So in this manner, it's not each and everyone who is called a Christian is hidden or is qualified to be hidden in God. So what is the requirement? What's, what is it required that we be hidden in Christ? Because this is very important. Now, the requirement number one is anyone who is born again and remain in fellowship with God. You know, many people have been born again as in process. They are born again by repeating the word of prayer. Oh, I am a sinner. Forgive me. But they do not remain in fellowship with God. They do not remain in fellowship with His word. So they just fulfill those rituals and they move away. Instead of remaining, they move out and the devil catches them and uses them. So that is the requirement number one. Someone who is born again. Someone who remains in fellowship with God. Let's um, see what Ephesians say. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22. Quickly. The Bible says... <clears throat> It's beginning from 20. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off, put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful rust. So what does this say? He says, put off. You should put off concerning your former conduct. Put off your old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful rusts. There are there is rife we've been leaving behind, I mean previous lives, that we messed up with God, we messed up in sins, men are messed up in drinking, men are messed up in fornication, men are messing up in different things, and they have, uh, they have, you know, wronged God. I'm not speaking about those people who are not born again, I'm speaking about those who have been born again. There are people who call themselves Christian, who have been born again, but they're still messing up in sin. They have not forsook. They have not put off. They have not removed their old fresh. They have not, they have not took off everything that is uh, tying them with the old man. So put off. My brother, put off. If you read verse 23, it says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on. Uh, the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. After you put off, you should also put on. Many people put off in a process of repentance, in a process of being converted, but they do not put on Christ. They do not put on, you know, as the Bible says. You should be renewed. Renew your mind. Change the way you think. Change the way you behave. Build a strong fellowship, relationship with God. Victory will come. Victory will come. And you will be strong in faith. And you will overcome. So, with that, will make you be hidden in Christ. Or with Christ in God. There are, many, uh, there are many also call themselves Christian, but they live in sins from Monday to Saturday. Then Sunday they go to church, they go to worship, yet they've been living in sin for the whole week. 
They have changed the Christianity into religiosity. Brother and sister, Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is faith in Christ. And it is rife by itself because you cannot live in dual life and still be praising Christ. You cannot live in sin and then live in Christ so that God cannot be happy with you. Renew your mind. One thing I've noticed that you cannot change your life if you have not changed your mind. Change the way you think. Read the word of God regularly. It will help cleanse in your mind. It will help renew your mind. Now, most of such are fighting with many things. You will find many Christians fighting with many things that are not even uh, absolute. They are not obvious. They cannot see. They fight with many spirits. They fight. It's family spirits. They fight with witchcraft. They don't get enough sleep at night. They, you know, get bad dreams. They run. They are being chased out. They dream evil. They have, you know, terrible dreams every night. And yet they are Christians. They need to build a strong relationship with God in order to be hidden with Christ in God where our lives is and where our lives are. So be born again and remain in love with Christ. Read your Bible every day. Pray regularly. Make strong relationship with God. You will overcome and you will be hidden with Christ in God. And therefore, you will be safe and secure. I wish you safety and security in Jesus Christ. If you have not found refuge in Christ, if you have not found life in Christ, if you have not found peace in Christ, the problem is not in Christ. The problem is in you yourself. Read the Bible, pray, seek people to talk to you and to advise you or to help you and repent, brother, sister. You will reach. The journey will be too smooth for you. The devil will not find you. Evil spirits will not find you easily. You will overcome and you will be victorious. I wish you all a victorious life in Jesus Christ. And I wish you all successful in Jesus Christ. And uh, let me bless you with a, a short prayer. Father, pray for victory each and everyone who, fear, who hears this word. I pray that whoever will tune on this channel, Father, will be touched and will be blessed. Let the power of God, let the anointing touch them. Father God, let their, uh, their battle cease. Let the mighty God, let them obtain victory. I pray for victory. I pray for life. I pray for safety. I pray for security. I pray for the peace of mind to each and everyone. Thank you for your blessing and thank you for your love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. God give